process and the supporting documents that you'll need to complete the application. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for the presentation. Okay, so tonight um, focus again is the New York State application um, process and supporting documents. I just wanna talk a little bit about the vision of minority and women's de business development. Their mission is to promote equality of economic opportunities for MWBEs to eliminate the barriers to their participation in state contracts. Their key objectives are to encourage and assist state agencies to award a fair share of contracts to MWBEs, also to review the applications by businesses that are seeking certification and maintain a directory for certified MWBEs. Also, they are to promote the business development of MWBEs through education and outreach to New York State agencies, as well as MWBEs. There are eligibility requirements under this program. Under the Article 15A of the Executive Law, any for-profit firm that is at least 51% owned, operated, and controlled by citizens or permanent resident aliens who are either woman or minority is eligible for certification. Um, below our list of minority groups who are eligible, uh, first we have uh, Black persons having origins from any of the Black African racial groups. We have Hispanic persons of Mexican, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, Central or South American descent, either Native American or Latin American origin, regardless of race. Also, we have Asian Pacific persons having origin from the Far East, Southeast Asia or Pacific Islands. Asian Indian subcontinent persons having origins from the Indian subcontinent. Native American persons having origins in any of the original peoples of North America. This is very important um, to know uh, which group you fit in, to know if you're a, eligible to proceed with the application in the process. Continued are further eligibility requirements. So in addition to your background and race, you must have ownership, operation, and control of all firms seeking MBE, M, I'm sorry, WBE or MWBE certification. And they must be they must be independently operated and controlled by a minority or a woman. Their ownership must be real, substantial, and continuing. And the minority or woman members must exercise the authority to independently control the day-to-day -day decision. The personal net worth for each woman or minority who the certification is based on uh, should not have a net worth exceeding 1.3 million after allowable deductions. This does not include your primary residence of up to 500,000 of any qualified uh, of up to, I'm sorry, primary residence and three up to 500,000 of any qualified retirement savings plans. Small business restriction, the firm cannot exceed 300 employees. So it's really geared towards small businesses. It must be independent, active and in business for at least a year. So if you're considering uh, applying for certification, just note the day that you actually form your company um, legally. Um, I usually go by that date um, because it's on record, it's paper trail. Um, so one year, okay, you could do it on the anniversary, start the application on that one year. Um, also out of state applicants um, can be certified as an MWB he in New York state, but they must have the certification in their home state and apply with Department of State for authority to have to conduct business in New York State. And if you need more information on how to become uh, an authorized business in New York State, you will go to the Department of State Division of Corporations um, and the email and contact uh, phone number are on the bottom if you would like to inquire more. So let's jump into the application. So this is a site where you would go to create a profile and start the application. Um, so as you see, I'm actually gonna go into the site. Uh, this is just a screenshot of the site. Uh, let me get there, one minute.
Uh, do you see my screen? So this is the actual site where you would go online to complete the application. As you see, there's a login button in the middle. So after you create your username and password, you will be using that blue button to get in and out of your application. Now to create your profile, which we'll talk a little bit more um, into the presentation, um, you would go here, MWBE certification, certify or recertify with me in New York. You click on that and you would always choose option one to create an account. Uh, once you create a, an account, it's gonna ask you for your tax ID number, your business information, the business contact information, and the company contact, right? And then you would choose your password. And your username will be the email address that you use um, in this profile. So, and what I, the advice I would give to you when doing this is to please write this down. Um, I know a lot, uh, uh, individuals will save it to the computer or to their phone. And then when we need to get into the application, if you're you know, here in the office with me, it's, we're unable to do that. I mean, we can always reset the password, but always to make the process a little easier for you, just have all this information together um, whenever you're gonna go into this application. Okay, so getting started, complete a vendor profile or a public profile setup. Why is a vendor profile important? Because it acts as an electronic business card. It's accessible to primes and other firms and state agencies or authorities. It can may lead to potential business opportunities and be sure to keep your business information current. Any business can have a vendor profile regardless of the certification status. So as long as you create your profile here, um, you, you're not certified yet, but you're more than welcome to have this profile. The vendor profile is not the same as the certification application. So it's, you know, if you, once you create your profile, you still have to go in and open the application to start it. Now let's talk a little bit about the certification process. Know the supporting documents required. Uh, so the supporting document checklist, uh, let me get to that screen as well. So this is the supporting documents, let's get back over there, checklist, if you could see this. So at the top, you know, and I call this the, the Bible uh, for the certification application, because it tells you the documents that you'll need based on your business structure um, and for the documents that are actually needed in the application as well. So as you look here, required for all applicants, you'll need your resume, uh, a bank signature card or a letter from the bank, your current business financial statement. Now, this actually has been taken out of the application. It, the application has went through a lot of changes. So a lot of the forms or the required documents have been removed, uh, making it less of a hassle to complete. Um, also, another uh, change to this application are, are the tax returns. So depending on when you try uh, in the past, apply for the certification, you did go in and see that these were requirements, uh, three years of tax returns. Um, but now this application is uh, now asking for only the current year tax returns, which is a lot more easier to do, right? A uh, lot less paperwork. Also, um, so each minority or woman upon certification based on the first two years of federal and personal tax return as well. So you will need your business tax returns and your personal tax returns. In addition to that, uh, there is an attachment A form, which I'll show you a little bit in a little bit, uh, that you'll also need to complete. And now this form is uh, to determine your net worth. So your net worth cannot exceed 1.3 million. Now, if it does exceed 1.3 million, you will need to complete the attachment B worksheet, which I'll show you that uh, sheet in a little bit as well. Now, the next section, documents proof of sources of capitalization. 
is a must. So in this section, um, you will you know, note what you spent, um, what you're bringing into the business when you formed it, um, your experience, um, your personal uh, donations, uh, loans, gifts, um, all this is, will be needed when you uh, complete this section. Now, once this section has this information in it, you will need to provide the proof of the sources. And what I, I recommend a lot of businesses to use will be, especially for corporations or LLCs, when you filed your business with Department of State, you did pay that fee to do that. Um, so that would be a source of capitalization, right? Uh, your experience in the industry, um, another source of, of capitalization. You would just need to determine what your experience is worth um, moving forward uh, to get a dollar amount on your, exper your expertise. Okay, now it says here, if the applicant firm would need to pr provide proof of ethnicity. So um, you would, there's a form that you would complete and notarize. I'll actually show you these forms in a bit um, to your ethnicity. And then you would check off the box and then you notarize this form, which is also needed, especially if you're applying for MBE certification. Proof of citizenship, your birth certificate, your passport, um, must be needed as well. Assign lease agreements and proof of ownership. So, so if you are renting a space for your business, you will need to provide a lease. Um, if you're operating from home, you will need to provide a mortgage statement or the deed to the property. All third party, uh, signed third party agreements. So these could be agreements that you have with other vendors to help run your operation from day to day whether that be a Zoom member a subscription, uh, maybe some supplies or materials, uh, you know, anything that you need to pay for to help, um, you know, put, uh, the operations in your business. Any employment agreements as well. If you have any vehicles that are registered to the business or you use for business, they will want to see the copy of the registration uh, that goes in the window. Uh, so again, some of, this, some of these requirements have been removed. So uh, this, uh, any cert certification, decertification or denial of certification, that was uh, required, but now it's not there. So don't worry about that as well. Copies of licenses, permits or accreditations utilized by the firm, definitely, especially if you're in an industry that is going to require you to be licensed or have a permit, they're going to want to see that in the application. For all sole proprietorships and partnerships, a copy of the New York State Vendor Tax Registration, it will be required. Um, also in the application, there will be written requests for exemption from disclosure regarding trade secrets, if, if need be, if your firm requires that. Required for sole proprietors. So depending on the structures, um, a sole proprietor completing this application will need a copy of the certificate of trade name or business filed with the county clerk's office. If you're out of state uh, business, you must provide a New York State vendor tax number, which can be obtained by contact the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. And that number is listed here as well. For partnerships, uh, if appropriate documents are not submitted and no written explanation is given, application will not be processed. So um, you wanna make sure you have this information. Um, and we'll go into why, um, if, if you don't have it, you know, to create a, a statement saying that. Um, I'll explain that as well in a little bit. But for partnerships, uh, a business certificate included in the amendments, the partnership agreement, buyout rights, very important. For corporations, uh, so the state filing receipt um, and the articles of incorporation. So when you filed with Department of State they, and paid, you're giving a filing receipt. This will be the filing receipt that you will use and can use in the proof of source of capitalization as well. With that filing receipt, you will need your articles of incorporation. You will need the minutes of the first uh, corporate meeting. So the day that you actually created this company and filed for the structure uh, would be a day that you, 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 know, you had the meeting and decided on that. So the first meeting minutes should reflect those, those changes or those uh, duties to be done in the business. 
copies of your stock ledger. So the stock certificates were required in the past, but now your stock ledger, a completed, which is right below it, completed up-to-date stock ledger will be required. So just in, in your corp binder kit, there is a ledger in there. It should be behind the stock certificates. Um, you would need to complete that, copy and scan all pages and upload it to the application. Uh, I would say corporation certificate of authority to conduct business. So we talked a little bit about the certificate of authority to conduct business in New York State. Um, you will need that as well. Okay, so if, if need be, um, furnish copies of agreements relating to the stock options, shareholders agreement, shareholders voting rights, restriction on the disposal of stock loan agreements, tax pertaining to the value of shares, buyout rights, restrictions on the control of the corporation, and it will ask for your list of board of directors. So if you are a single member a corporation, you would be the only one here on the board. Now, if it's you and a partner, you and your partner's name would be here or partners would be listed there as well. Okay. Now, I believe this one. Okay, so that was the same one. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so we talked about, um, well, we're going to go into talking about the importance of a business description. So in this application, you will be asked to describe your products and services um, provided in the business. Now, in this section, instead of uh, providing like this example, I provide environmental consulting services. So instead of just that one worded, undetailed, uh, sentence, the one on the bottom will be more likely the one that you would add there. Uh, you want to be de more detailed um, in doing the description so that you're able to, you know, make sure all your goods and services are in there. So if an opportunity arises, um, you won't be left out, you know, based on what you put in this, uh, this section to describe your services. In addition to describing your services, I also want to note that that section also is what they will use to put on a directory uh, for MWBE, certified MWBE. So you want to be more descriptive because this is what the buyers will see when they're looking for um, vendors with the codes that they're looking for. Uh, so you want to be descriptive as possible in that regard. So this next slide, we're going to talk about the NASIC codes. Very, very important as well. So these basic codes uh, is the, it's called the North American Industry Classification System and is the standard used by the federal and state agencies in classifying business establishments and the goods and services they provide. That's what the census does, GOV. So the codes selected must represent current business activities performed. They all, the activities must be done over the year, over the last year, so within that year. Codes for activities not yet performed will not be approved. But also note that if you're, you're applying, filling out, completing the application and you are expecting to do more work down the road, we, although we wouldn't be able to add them into the application, we can always update the application later on. New York State, so the New York State uh, certification application I call the one-stop shop. So in this application, you are able to apply for certification with three other agencies. Uh, one being New York City Department of Small Business Services, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the County of Erie and City of Buffalo Joint Certification Committee, 
just by completing uh, the addendums that are in the application. And let me get to those. I wanna go uh, show each one to you now. Okay, so this first addendum will be for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. So, you know, the addendum, you know, I say complete these addendums because the certification process, um, are, are all of them are quite the same. So they do ask for almost the same documents. Uh, this is why it makes it easier to complete it in this one setting so that you're not uploading or giving out these same documents to multiple agencies when they can grab it from one application. So this addendum, uh, this is the first page. Uh, so, you know, you'll read this information. They will require you to register your business here. Um, the vendor pro to create a, a vendor profile on their site as well. And you will sign and date and notarize this last form. Okay, now once you do that, you will then scan it and upload it to the application. The next addendum is for the uh, County of Erie and the city, city of Buffalo Joint Certification Committee. So these addendums, they're quite easy to do, right? A few pages, you, you, know, you answer a few questions about your business, check up a few boxes, sign and date, okay? And, and only a few of them will require uh, a notary, uh, like the Port Authority. Uh, this one does not. Okay, let's go into okay, New York City. So this addendum for New York City, again, they're all quite the same. They're, you know, pages, a few pages that you would just fill in your business information and fill, uh, complete a few check marks. But with the city, what I've noticed is that this page, page three, at the top where it asks, do you have a valid New York City FMS vendor number? This box, you wanna check yes. Because if you check no, when New York State approves you, uh, now going to the city, you'll have a hiccup. Um, you will need to get that vendor number before they can give you the certification. So I always say, let's apply for that number now so it'll make it less of a process to obtain later on. So you check off yes. And to complete this vendor uh, number with the city, we'll, you will go to the payee information portal and they do give you instructions here where to go to register your business. Also, fast track applications. So I hear a lot of stories about, you know, I wonder how can I get my application fast tracked? Um, you know, how can I get it in quicker? Um, it's usually a long wait time. Well, New York state-based firms that are certified already with the County of Erie, New York City Department of Small Business Services, Port Authority of New York, New Jersey, um, New York and New Jersey Minority Supply Development Council, Women's President Education Organization um, can get certified as a disadvantaged business uh, entity, DBE, um, with federally funded transportation agency in the US. So you can get certified as a federal eight disadvantaged business with the US Small Business Administration. Uh, the above certifications, they all must be current and have more than three months remaining before expiration to be eligible for the fast track. Now the fast track um, does not guarantee that your application will go in and, and uh, have a, a quicker uh, at review process. It, what it does is just, makes the application go to the analyst sooner so that it can go to the review process. And I've seen some of the decisions on a fast track application go turn around really quickly. So it, it will be helpful if you come in as a fast track application, if you're eligible. So uh, we've talked about the attachment um, 
a little bit about the net worth. But now I'm going to go into the certification application uh, document to show you what it is that you need to complete on that form, as well as the actual attachment A form, the uh, attachment B, the worksheet, and the ethnicity attestation clause form. Let me skip them now. The, okay. So this one is the certification application affidavit. Now this has also been changed. Um, before it was like a, a two page document, really one or you know the second page you complete. Um, but now it's a few pages. So they've added a lot of things to this affidavit. Um, they've actually broken up uh, whether you're a minority owned business or woman owned business. So you would certify uh, to which one you are certifying for and notarize it, okay? The attachment A, personal net worth, looks like this. Now on this form, you will add your social. You will also add your percentage of equity in the company, in the company name here. And also you will calculate your net worth and add it here, uh, what you calculate it to be. Once you do that, you will sign and also notarize this attachment A4. I just want you to note that we will be taking questions towards the end of the presentation. But if you do have uh, a question uh, pertaining to what I'm uh, talking about currently, feel free to chime in and I will get your, answer, your question answered. Now, this one, the attachment B, the personal financial statement worksheet, few pages. Now, this one is required only if your net worth exceeds 1.3 million for the application. But I do advise the clients if they are not sure what their net worth is, they can use this sheet to help determine that because the application is, will ask for the, your net worth. Um, so you wanna be uh, you know, sure about what it is. Now on this form, it's gonna ask you what your assets are and what your liabilities are. So your assets minus your liabilities will give you a net worth. Now, there are also a section here for prior year of income. Uh, your source of income for the prior year will go here. I just wanna also advise that for areas that are not applicable, um, please mark NA in, in, in those areas. Do not leave any of the areas blank. Section four, real estate owned property. This is where you would list your residence uh, owned. Your primary is not included. So it's any other property after that. So your rentals, your vacation homes um, will go here. And any other supporting documents, assets, uh, unpaid taxes, uh, other liabilities, life insurance held, um, just explanations or uh, attach any other documents pertaining to these fields that you complete. Okay, sign and date and social number. Now, this is only if you're adding this to the application. The last form that I'm going to discuss um, on the mandatory supporting documents would be the ethnicity attestation clause. Oh, there you go. So this is what that form looks like. So on here, you will check off your origin, your background, initial, uh, the name of the business, and your signature and uh, your print, your print, your signature here. And this form will be notarized. So if you're applying for MBE certification, you will need to upload this document.
Okay, so we talked a little bit about the mandatory doc documents, proof of citizenship, um, your gender, your birth records, your birth certificate, the, the U.S. passport, any military records, your green cards, business documents, including New York State uh, 45 forms and W-3 forms, any loan and credit agreements, leases, supply agreements, uh, partnership, and oh, an LLC. It seems like I go back to forgetting a lot. Okay. Um, but, okay. And uh, partnerships and LOCs. Um, again, you need your assumed name certificate from the county clerk's office, operating agreements, partnership agreements, et cetera. Um, also, your IRS form 1065 with the schedule K. So, all of the tax documents that you get when you, you complete your taxes, the whole form, the whole packet. Um, and your professional background, your own, you know, the resume, any licenses or permits or certification will also um, support your uh, expertise or your professional background. Uh, so proprietorships, again, um, you know, county clerk's office, you will need your most recent business taxes, uh, partnership and LLCs, will need your assumed name certificate from the county clerk's office. Um, corporation shareholder agreements and corporate bylaws, um, and again, tax forms. Um, so again, what I uh, stated earlier in the presentation about writing a statement. So in this application, there are sections that you will need to complete in order to move to the next or even to complete it. Um, and if so, uh, if the section does not pertain to you, you will write a section, you would write a statement, and I always advise to do it on letterhead uh, the company letterhead um, to say that this statement is either not applicable or to say, um, you know, why you don't have a document or just, you know, just for explanations. Whenever you're going to do that on letterhead, if you don't have the requested documentation. So it says get it or prepare it if you can. Uh, previously, the profit and loss statements, a balance sheet, you know, usually some businesses don't really, you know, um, follow this or use this, um, but they, they should, right? Um, create just, you know, at the end result, you write an explanation for the sections that you cannot uh, provide the documentation for or if it's not applicable. Um, so I'm gonna take this time to answer any questions out there. Um, feel free to um, add to the Q&A or in the chat. Uh, let's see if we have any questions. If does anyone have any questions regarding this presentation or anything you've learned uh, so far about the application or the documents? Yes, this recording will be available. Um, it will be um, put on the, our EAC Facebook page. Um, but if you would like us to get you the link for, to our place, Facebook page, feel free to send us an email or give us a call. That information is in the chat. Yes, so I have a question here. Do you have to be in business for a minimum of one year? You do. Now, there are waivers out there for, uh, let's say, engineers um, or architects that will waive the one year requirement 
if, you know, if they've already been doing work in that field already. Now, let's say you are sole proprietor and you're, you're, you have clients that you're, you know, you're selling to or providing services to, and, um, but you haven't really formally started the business. Now, what I have, have done is that I put in requests for, to, to get for that to be a waiver as well, and some of them have been approved. So you don't actually have to be an engineer or architect to apply for the waiver, as long as you can provide the documentation that you're actually conducting business before. So if you had clients, like I said, if you had them and you were making money, but you weren't officially in business, but you, you know, you operate it, um, you, we can count that. The next question, does EAC help individuals one-on-one -on -one complete the application? Yes. And, you know, and we do pride ourselves on that service. So if you require assistance, if you're in the middle of completing the application and need that one-on-one -on -one assistance, um, our contact information is in the chat. You will meet with me. I'll set up a meeting and we'll do this. It may take a couple of meetings before the application is done. But you know your passion and determination to be complete will you know end good results. Uh, okay, more questions. I have a few in the chat. Okay, the Facebook uh, link is in the chat. Thank you. Now. A big concern is with the length of time that it will take for the application once it's submitted, how long will it take for you to be approved or find out the status on the application? So I always say, you know, going to uh, any EAC center is beneficial to you because we do advocate for the clients. Um, so it really depends. One, if you did it on your own, two, which center you went to, um, and, um, you know, how determined, you know, the counselor that helped you with the application is to, to get you to, to see you through in the certification. And that requires having a good sound app, complete application before submitting it. Uh, just one moment. Okay, there are some questions on Facebook Live. Jay, do you have those questions on Facebook? No, not yet. There is no, there is no any question on Facebook. Um, so I see the last question. I'm not sure if I answered your, your question already. Again, uh, we do offer help with the application. Um, what I do recommend you to do is to make sure you have your username and password written down. Um, create a MWBE folder with all that information in it so that when we meet, uh, we can go in and out of this application, um, you know, and get things done, you know, when we meet. I see the Facebook link is in the chat. Sure, so um, um, Jay, can you please put the contact information for the center in the chat again? I believe it was all the way at the top. Sure, sure. We'll add it again, sure. sure. So this application process could be a lot doing it on your own. Uh, we do understand that. And you know, this is one of the reasons why our services are so much valuable to business owners seeking the certification because of the one-on-one -on -one assistance we provide um, and getting the application completed. Now, once the application is submitted, again, I do advocate for our clients to um, have this application um, be assigned to an analyst to, to begin the review process. So again, it's a, another benefit for you going 
to the EAC centers uh, if you would like to see your application um, quickly, the status of your application quickly. Okay. Are there any other questions? I don't see any questions on the chat. Oh, okay, I think I see something here. With the Suffolk County Clerk since 2018 as a sole proprietor become active 2021 am i uh, yes you are because you have that paper trail as a sole proprietor um, to show that you were in business years ago right so you would be eligible now with you i would go in just to start i would open the application and just provide those documents to show your length of time in business so the the county clerk certificate and the documents from 2021. So if you are, are, I'm not sure if you're still a sole proprietor or you are um, a different structure, um, but you would just show all that documentation. And from 2018, you sure are eligible. Um, can one has more than one expert? Uh, one company, I'm not really sure. Um, Oh, um, sure, right? So if um, it says, can one company have more than one expertise? So yes, right? So depending on the services you're providing, right? So you wanna be, if you're providing a service and you have an expert, say, let's say you have a uh, consulting business, but you're really skilled in like maybe construction, consulting or, or you know, like a different industry, that would be a whole nother expertise in your business, right? Now, sometimes I've seen where um, the expertise rely on partnerships. So like say you'll have, one owner will have one expertise in a certain area, and then the other owner would have the other expertise. That's usually how I see the partnerships joined uh, with, for experience. Uh, how long do does New York State take to process the application. So you wanna have, again, I, I do stress having a, a complete um, so a complete application submitted. So the application must have the documents that it's asking for in the application. Um, and you be an EAC client. Um, so once that application goes in, depending on, you know, how the consultant or the, the um, representative that you're working with uh, pushes on it will be determined how quickly the application will be reviewed. So once the application is submitted, the next step would be to have it received from the uh, MWBE program and then assigned. So when the application is received, that's a good sign because that means an analyst is gonna get that application. Uh, they receive it, so it has to be assigned. So you'll start getting email notifications on that process. So once you submit it, you'll, you'll see that, you know, you'll get the confirmation it's submitted and then you'll get a confirmation when they receive the application. Now for the actual review process, depends on, you know, how much information is in the application, right? So a sole proprietor going in uh, with all their information, you know, you know, it might be decided on quicker than someone with a corporation and partnerships. Um, so it really depends on the application, on how soon that application can be uh, decided on. You're welcome. So it's, I have another question here. Do, does the EAC help to expedite the processing of your application? Uh, we do advocate for that. We do advocate for that. Um, I've seen applications go in and, uh, you know, a complete application, uh, turnaround time, you know, I don't want to, you know, throw out some days, but I mean, less than two weeks, if it's a good application. Um, so it really depends on who you, who's helping you with the application um, and the follow-ups, the advocacy <laughs> after.
There's some question it, from Facebook. I see that. Uh, Facebook question, how long my business need to be in operation? To apply for certification, you need to be in business for a year. Now we didn't talk about the waivers. So if, you're, if you can show uh, activity before the year, um, you can apply for a waiver. And if you need help with that, um, I can help you with that. I do have um, the waiver requirements, uh, template for the waiver requirements uh, that we can assist you with, get that in. Now, when you request a waiver, the turnaround time on that is like a couple of days, maybe, once you request it. Um, it doesn't take long for you to get a response on the waiver. Um, once you do get a waiver, you go ahead and open the application and you would put that uh, email uh, approving you for the waiver in the application. Because in the application, they'll see that it's been less than a year, but when they see the waiver approval, they're gonna go ahead and, and complete review of the application. Do they require a proof of business insurance? So if that's a third party agreement that you need to um, conduct operate business or it's for the business, yes, they will need to see proof of that. I have another question from Facebook. What are the most common issues that... Uh, Parvent. I'm, uh, I'm sorry? Parvent. Uh, prevent, prevent people? prevent people from getting approved in your experience. Okay, um, so not getting approved, not having any business activity, you know, so you have to be a for-profit business to apply for this certification. You have to meet the eligibility requirements. Um, so there's, it, it, like, again, it really depends on the application uh, each application is different. Um, it could be uh, uh, it could be anything, right? So it has to be owned and controlled and operated by a, a woman or minority-owned business. So if it's not in any of those areas, it could be grounds for uh, not approved. Oh, okay. So the next question: Does EAC charge a fee for this service? Um, no, and that's a great thing, right? Um, we provide the service free of charge. We are partially funded through Empire State Development. Um, so we do not charge our, for our services. Um, no, we don't charge. And again, if you do need to set up that one-on-one -on -one with me, um, the email and number are in the chat. Yeah, okay. Once registered as an LLC, do you need insurance? So it depends on the industry, right, that you're, you're operating. So if you're an industry that, um, you know, may, that puts you at risk, or depending on um, any other type of insurances that you may need for that, but it really depends on the industry. Um, so if you are, uh, you know, that in a business that's going to make you liable for things, I would definitely have insurance. Um, again, it just depends on the industry. You're welcome. I have two uh, questions. Uh, nope, we did those or show all. I believe I got those questions from the Q&A. Are there any other questions? Okay, I do see one. David, okay, okay. these are great questions. These are really, really great questions. Does the, does the inspectors come to your office or home to verify your business status? You know, I've heard that back uh, in the day that might've been a case, um, but you know, I, I, they do, right? But it's not something that's written in stone. Uh, you can get a phone call, right? Um, or any other method of verifying your business status. I mean, you know, they will verify it 
by any means. Thank you, David. Are there any other questions that I can get answered for you tonight regarding the application process or the supporting documents? I went over a few documents today. Uh, I know uh, they're in the application and um, you know, you just complete them and, and notarize the ones that need to be notarized. But um, if you do need help with other areas of the application, or if you do have any questions about certification um, or in the middle of completing the application, just have a question. Um, the, although we don't charge for our services in order for us to assist you here or me to assist you here at the center, you will need to be a client. So there are forms that you will need to complete. Once those forms are complete, we could jump right into the meetings on and start completing the application. I have another question. I have a question here in the chat. I live in PA, but I live on the border of New York. I started my business a few years ago in Pennsylvania, but do more business in New York. Can I be registered in both states? Well, it's it's totally up to you. Now, if you want to be registered in PA and do business in New York, you would complete a certificate of authority with the Department of State uh, to get that authority to operate here as well. Um, you can register in both states, right? But again, you will need that authority to, to operate here if you're a PA-based business. Thank you, Erica. Um, my name is Kenya Harvey, and I'm the project coordinator and MWBE consultant for the center at Suffolk County Community College. You're welcome. Do I have any other questions? Can I get a, a sign to show how many um, are in maybe thinking about applying for the certification or maybe have an application open um, and, and are working to complete it? If you have an application open and, and are working to complete it, you could raise your hand. You could push the raise hand button on the bottom of your screen. Okay, no worries. So I, I believe this presentation is just about um, ending. Let me get back to the, yeah, so questions. So yes, this presentation will be done. This is the contact information. Application, please feel free to reach us at this number and email the EAP Center at sunysuffolk.edu to request uh, a meeting with me. Again, you will need to complete the new client forms in order to pick out all the questions. I just thought I saw two come up. Okay, uh, since there are no other questions for this evening, uh, this uh, webinar is um, done. I thank you so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you at our next webinar series starting in January. Happy holidays and um, happy new year to everyone. Uh, I think before I go, there may be another. Yes. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everyone.